Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The prophecy that I have today, the Lord gave it to me on January the 7th, 2024. However, it is a prophecy that has many parts. The Lord will be addressing nations and peoples in this prophecy. And therefore, for the sake of covering all the material that the Lord has given me, I am going to forego announcements. If you are a new person, you can simply skip back to any of the old annou announcements that I've made on old videos, and you will be able to hear more about how to get the best out of the channel, how to use the playlists, and things like that. The title of today's message is The Psalm 83 War and Exodus. The Psalm 83 War and Exodus, January the 7th, 2024. I've also received extensive notes from the Lord as I was going over the prophecy today. And those, if I'm able to cover the original material of the Psalm 83 War and Exodus, January 7, 2024, if I'm able to cover it and the video has not gone very long, then I will add in the notes that I have received from the Lord January the 10th, 2023, and the title of this word or these notes is simply Israel is a nation. Israel is a nation. And so if I'm not able to condense everything into one video, then you can watch out for a second video. And I will also be covering two prophecies from the Master's Voice Prophecy blog that deal with Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog. Those prophecies came in either June or July 2019. So they are about four years old or something like that. And so here is the word of the Lord. On the 7th of January 2024, the Lord brought to me a word and the Lord laid that word upon me and told me that as the word has been laid upon me, the word will fall upon the Yehudim the Yehudim, the modern day Jews, those who are living currently in the land of Israel, those who are currently occupying the land of Israel. And they are also here in a very vast multitude in the United States. They are all throughout Europe and other parts of the world. This message is to that group of people. The Psalm 83 war and Exodus, the Lord said, read Psalm 83 in their hearing and tell them that war is already brewing. Please note that to any other nations who are listening, you are playing the part of the multitudes. The multitudes. So God is using you if you are from Cambodia, if you are from India, if you are from any nation in South America, Australia, if you live in Antarctica, or even if you are here in America and you are not part of the Yehudim those who call themselves Jews. I also have scripture to read from Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9 and another scripture, but we will go through this as methodically as possible. This word is extremely important to God. This word is extremely important to God and the, God, and the Lord has been pressing this word upon me and telling me not to delay at all to bring this word out. And so three days later, today is January the 10th, I'm bringing the word out. The Lord says to read Psalm 83 in the hearing of the Yehudim and the witnesses to this prophetic word against the Yehudim shall be the multitudes the nations you who are witnessing this word being released in this earth so read psalm 83 in their hearing and tell them that that war the psalm 83 war is already brewing tell them it is coming to their doors they will be confronted with the reality of war that tears apart the fabric of their families and puts them on the run this word is for the United States of America first and foremost. As the defender of the false Yehudim in Israel and every other nation who is mentioned in Psalm 83. The, the days of reckoning are near for all nations that fight against Israel. That is those who are God's true people. The Psalm 83 war is brewing the Psalm 83 war is coming, and with it, 
will come, wars, and rumors of wars, according to Revelation 6, which was prophesied long ago and is yet to be fully fulfilled. So at this time, as you are listening to this prophecy, you are going to have to try to key in to what the Lord is saying, because the Lord is saying several things here. The Lord says that the war that is listed in Psalm 83 is coming, that the war is already brewing and that it is going to come to the door. The Lord is saying that there are a people who pretend to be Israel. They are not Israel. When the Lord was talking to me before I put this camera on, what the Lord says is that they have actually put on the garments of another nation. So when in the Bible, when people are saying nation, it's not like the way we see it now. Now, when we say nation, we talk about where we are from. Oh, I'm from this country. Oh, I come from this nation. That's how we see it. But in the old days, a nation could simultaneously be a land mass, meaning a place that has borders, that has a name like Assyria. And then it will also mean all the people who fall within that nation. So you could be an Assyrian and then you could be from Assyria. But as things began to change because of wars and conquering and things like that, the nations began to contain people groups inside them who did not originally come from them. So in the place that is called Assyria, you could have people who had been captured from many other nations and brought over as tribute who eventually would call themselves Assyrians. When you start to do that, you would lose your original identity. So if you were from another place, such as Ur of the Chaldees or wherever it is that you would come from, long tarrying in Assyria, blending with the Assyrians and having babies whose dads and sometimes moms were Assyrians would cause you to take on all the cultural impetus and the national identity of that place. And then you would start to be known as Assyrians when you didn't start out that way. So when God is saying nation, when he is saying it, he has not changed. He predates all the blending and the mixing. So when God is saying nation, he's saying it biblically. He is saying that nation is actually a people. This means that they are one group. They will share common traits. It doesn't matter where they may be placed. They are one kind nation equaling people, not nation. I moved somewhere and then I naturalized. I'm originally from Ghana, but then I moved to Canada and now I call myself Ghanaian Canadian or something like that, which is what we do here in America. It's not like that. So please understand. So when God is saying Israel, he is not using the two phrases interchangeably. This prophecy is going to be directed to Israel, modern day came from everywhere on the boats and the ships and the planes and went to Palestine in 1948, May 14, 1948. That is one Israel, but that refers to the Yehudim. This is the name that the Lord is using to refer to them. And then there is Israel. That Israel will be called either true Israel or real Israel, according to how the Lord makes them known. So this prophecy that is coming is coming to the Yehudim, wherever they may be, but especially if they are in the land of Israel and second, especially if they are here in the United States, the prophecy is also coming to the United States as a nation. That means the country, modern day usage. This war is coming to Yehudim that are in Israel. It is coming to the United States of America as the chief propagator and defender. The Lord has great offense against you, America, for what you did in 1948. And I pray that the Lord will strengthen me for me to deliver the fullness of this prophecy to you. If it runs long, let it run long because people can go out there and watch the Avengers for three hours at the cinema and gain nothing. But when the word of God is coming forth, then they're talking about, can you shorten it up and hit the highlights? There are no highlights here. The Lord will speak and who listens, listens, and who does not, does not. So it's coming to Yehudim. It is coming to the United States of America. 
and it is coming to every other nation that is mentioned in Psalm 83. However, the nations in Psalm 83 don't have their identities revealed. Their identities are not revealed. Furthermore, the Lord has not given me those identities to speak of. He told me, read the Psalm in their hearing and tell them that the war is coming. So this war is going to be heard by as witness the multitudes, the nations, and also God says that you, his true people are also going to hear this word, read it to them and tell them that this war is already cooking up. So whether it is visible to us, Psalm 83 is about a coalition of nations that come against Israel land Israel and whoever is living there. Tell them it's coming to their doors and they're going to be confronted with the reality of how war tears apart the fabric of their families and puts them on the run. And then God says that the word that I'm delivering right now is primarily first and foremost for the United States of America for being the one who defends the false Yehudim in Israel and after America has heard this word. Then God says that this word is also for you, the ones who will be the instigator nations that are mentioned in Psalm 83. So America, God has sent me to tell you that you have gravely angered him by your actions in 1948. The Lord says that you raised yourself up in the earth and you went here and there collecting people that he did not send you to collect and you brought them to his land and settled them there and then declared that they were Israel. But the Lord says that your lie has gone on long enough and he is going to strike your lie out of the earth. And after that, he is going to strike you out of the earth. America being struck out of the earth is not a new prophecy. The entire Master's Voice prophecy blog has been raised up by Yah in the earth to tell all nations in all territory that one day there will be no America. Nations will continue and life will go on in whatever format it remains. But of the United States of America, there shall be no America. No matter what anyone says, the Lord says that the ending of this nation is destruction. Final judgment, as you can find in Revelation 18. And the Lord also says to the Yehudim that when your protector is struck a blow that she cannot recover from, you will be on your own and the Arabs that surround you will fall upon you and you will flee out of his land. So the days of reckoning are near for all the nations that are fighting against Israel. That is to say, God's true people. So God has a true people then. And he says that the days of reckoning, what is re reckoning? It is the day of settling accounts. It is the day where you've spent money here and you've spent money there and you've given money here and you swiped your card there and you've, you've paid costs. And now it's time to tally them up, all up and see what the final bill is. God says that he is going to settle every score with those who have fought against his true people. And the Psalm 83 war is going to set the stage for that because the war is brewing. The Psalm 83 war is coming. And when this war enters the earth, the Lord says that this thing that we can find in Revelation chapter six, that phrase that is called wars and rumors of wars is going to kick up into a higher level. So I've been sitting here for the last four and a half years since May, 2019. And I have been telling everyone who has an ear to listen that peace is going to be taken roughly from this earth. Like a man in bed who suddenly has the blankets ripped off him and the cold reality of the room that he has been sleeping in will begin to waft and blow against him quite strongly. That is how I have been proclaiming here the word of the Lord that war is coming to this nation, the United States of America. A civil war of minimum three years has been declared against this country. And God says, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, and no matter what you pray, that war will fall upon you for the nation of America must taste the wars 
that she has taken to others. God says that you have caused women in foreign countries to spontaneously abort their babies with the shock of having your bombs fall upon them all of a starry night. For that, for the loss of lives, for pouring, you can find this in the Syria prophecies, the Lord says for pouring boiling hot napalm on those people in Vietnam and causing them to this day to still have children that come with all kinds of defects. The children come being born without eyes. They come and instead of having an arm, all they have is two fingers coming out. Their gene pool was so affected by America's brutal actions. These were not careless actions. These were brutal actions. People were at the helm of that war and that war went on. Whether people were for it, against it, petitioning, picketing, or backing it up. Whether you picketed, whether you petitioned it, whether you backed it up or you were for it, the nation is hearing the estimation of her crimes. For burning the, bo the bones of the Japanese to lime, all of this has been brought forth. You can find that particular um, pronouncement in Amos chapter 2, where God says uh, for three three transgressions and for four for burning the bones of the king of Edom to lime. So there was some diabolical king who went to war and set fire to places, tying up people and letting them burn until they, they burnt to ash and phosphorus and all the different um, materials that we turn to when we are burned alive. God says that America also will pay the penalty for burning people alive in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And therefore, no matter what happens, war will come to these shores, war will come to these borders, for God is just and God has to answer that kind of brutality. And this is what I've always told people. I will bring the prophecy about slavery here and then there will be a lot of tumult and a lot of upset and a lot of throwing of the toys. Why is God still angry? And besides the Arabs had slaves. Yes, but then you're not Arab here in America and the Lord has sent the word to you. So then why the confusion and the anger? The Bible does tell us that God bears long with a sinner, but he doesn't forget anything. And God said that the slavery that happened here and the systematic extermination also of the Native Americans, the man called it, the Lord Jesus has called it, a wound upon him. He said that their wound is his wound. And the reason that they cannot forget is because he cannot forget and he will not forget until he has repaid it. So when the Lord says things like this, it's not a group corporate board vote. He doesn't say the things he says so that everyone can say, I vote yay, and I vote nay, and I vote, I believe it, and I vote that I think this is a false prophecy. The Lord has spoken. And as it says in the Bible, that the, I think this is Isaiah 9, somewhere in Isaiah 9, it says the Lord has spoken a word to Jacob, and it has fallen upon Israel. So when the Lord makes a proclamation to one person, once that word is brought out, it will roll out like the most massive boulder you've ever seen. And the only thing is, will you try to stand in the path of it so that it can crush you? Or will you politely stand on the side so that it can go about and do its business? And so, days of settlement are near for all the nations that have fought against true Israel, God's people, and the Psalm 83 war is afoot. It is on the way. And when that war is coming, like a volcano rumbling and causing disturbances in all the areas around it, wars and rumors of wars are going to kick off according to Revelation 6, which was prophesied long ago and is yet to be fully fulfilled. The next part of the prophecy is to Africa. The Lord says, Africa, you must become self-sufficient so that you do not fold and collapse in the coming wars of the West. If you do not become self-sufficient or at least interdependent, you will suffer when those who buy your goods cannot afford to buy them anymore. Build up yourselves, says the Lord, or suffer. This is the word to the African 
continent. And so occasionally the Lord will give me a word um, for an African nation. I know that I have brought um, words here concerning witchcraft and I've named um, certain countries in West Africa and I named, uh, I think, South Africa and Tanzania and one or two other countries. And then the Lord has also given me a word concerning the fact that Africa must be careful because the Lord says that in the future, a helping hand of development will come to Africa. So um, all these tech billionaires and things like that, they're going to come to Africa and they're going to come full of ideas for development and they're going to offer to do this and do that for you. But God says that the hand is actually a helping hand of death. When this thing begins to kick off, when these people begin to come to the continent of Africa and make deals here and there and say, we want to put satellites in the sky for you and we want to increase your Wi-Fi capabilities and we want to, I don't know what it's called, fiber optic, yes. We want to dig in the ground and put the fiber optic in there for you and let us, let us cut down the trees so that you can get better signal. All that is happening is that they are trying to build Africa up in preparation for the beast system because God says that the beast system, um, I've shared here many times over the years that the beast system is highly technological and the beast system relies extremely heavily on AI. For AI, you need electricity, you need machinery, you need technology of all kinds um, to be sort of like a ruling overlord. And because Africa doesn't yet have that stage of hyper, hyper, hyper development like they have in Europe and here in the United States, God says that in order to really push forward the finality of the beast system, it is necessary to build all the infrastructure. So they're not going to want a heavily built up a nation like here and then another nation still struggling for this and that and that. They will want uniformity. They will want uniformity of the technology, uniformity of the roads, uniformity of knocking off all the trees. And I've told you that the Lord says they want to cut down every single tree that you have so that when their little drone things are flying and, and sending down those beaming rays to fry people who are in defiance to the system, well, there won't be a single tree to hide behind. So. In this case, God is talking about self-sufficiency. And what the Lord is putting in my heart right now to tell you is that self-sufficiency is um, a blessing. They have a saying that says, you know, if you give a man a fish, then you can feed him for a day. But if you teach a man how to fish, then you can feed him for life. And God is strongly saying to all who are in the African continent, whether you are a young person and you are still wondering about what your future is going to be, where you're going to go to school, whether you're a person of working age, whether you're an older person, you are just at the cusp of retirement, you have already retired perhaps, God is saying that self-sufficiency is necessary and essential. And the reason for that is if Africa does not become self-sufficient, God says that you will fold and you will collapse once the West begins having their wars. So the, that is wars plural. So there are going to be wars breaking out in many different parts of the, of the world. And usually the wars don't break out in the so-called developed nations, civilized nations like the United States. She will always make sure that no war is actually fought in her nation because as God says, America is very wise. America doesn't want to break down her cell phone towers. She doesn't want to bomb her roads. She doesn't want to have dead bodies floating in her dams, lakes, and rivers, polluting her water sources. She wants to keep the lights on and so Netflix can keep collecting money. So America will send, uh, she exports the wars. That is what God says. America is a foreign exporter of war. So she will go over to somebody else's home base, somebody else's house, and then she will bomb them there. So she will decimate their population and cause them to have outbreaks of diseases once all their clinics are not working. And she will cause all their military aged men to be dead and make all their women widows and the children orphans and all the things that are quite well known. They're not being made up by me. CNN has kept a great library over the years. So nobody can say that this is not true. However, war is going to come to many of the Western centers. I know that I brought a prophecy here. I think it's called the many words of God. This was in 2021 and God was talking about those nations up there, Nordic nations, that is what I call them, Iceland and Finland and Denmark and Sweden, Switzerland there. They are going to have uh, outbreaks of wars among themselves that will almost be as if bees have stung them in the mind. 
So those nations are going to go into wars of madness. That is all that I can say, because what I saw is it's not even going to be for any real reason. And those people, as I saw them having their wars, they're going to fight to the death because those regions, I think, is where you find Gaelic people, perhaps, and also Vikings. I'm not perfect in my etymology of peoples, but I can just tell you there that those people are not quitters. And so the wars that I saw them having were quite brutal, upfront, face-to-face -face kind of confrontations, and they will literally fight to the death. The Lord said that he will send madness upon them because they have sat there and allowed themselves to become totally godless nations. And the Lord also said to me that the war will come among them for one other reason and that reason is because of dna dna that there is a thread flowing in the bloodline up there and god says that because this is the time of the end and all scores must be settled uh that thread up there is going to be eliminated so to come back to africa god says if you don't become self-sufficient or if you do not at least become interdependent, you will suffer in your area of trade, which is what you greatly depend on. Interdependency is simply learning how to trade with one another. Instead of waiting for European countries to buy your coffee or your cocoa, the Lord is saying that you basically have to sell it to each other so that when there comes an interruption in western centers of commerce because of for instance the economic um the economic explosion the explosive economic collapse that is going to come i prophesied all these things here for years that um money the us dollar for sure and a lot of other european currencies will become absolutely useless and people will throw them on the ground and we will stop using money at that time then you will have no one to buy from you so god says learn how to be interdependent among yourself because if you don't and you want to sell goods there will be no buyers to afford anything even the diamond even the silvers even the gold even the ores if you don't become self-sufficient and learn how to turn your own crude oil into refined oil so you can keep your cars going if you don't learn how to refine your own cocoa and turn it into belgian chocolate same quality if you don't learn how to dig up your own diamonds and cut them and sell them right there to each other, then um, God says that you will just collapse. You will just fold and collapse. Build yourselves up or suffer is the word that God is giving to Africa. And now to South America, God says, please note that all this is the same prophecy. It is all the Psalm 83. This is Psalm 83 and Exodus. So I'm just reading what the Lord gave me. The word to South America is God says that false religion is going to overwhelm you and destroy you unless you can break its hold among you. Come out of it and be rehabilitated to the worship of the one true God. Catholicism is nothing but a plethora of blended religions from ancient times, including very old pagan and religious rites that come directly from ancient Babylon. The Lord says, I am the Lord, your God. You shall have no other God before me. Come out of water worship, spirit worship, paganism, and the worship of Mary as your mother. Worship my own dear son, Jesus Christ. That is, worship my own dear son, Jesus Christ, so that the bloodshed of your ancestors does not return to you anymore. If you do not turn away from Catholicism and also wild Pentecostalism and false churches, then you will have wars. The spirit of madness that threatened your ancestors and drove them to bloody extinction will return to your nations and you will fight among yourselves like they did because of false worship to deities and snakes. And the main snake that is in question here is the one that I have described in several prophecies. It is a massive, massive snake. The snake simply looks like a road that never ends as you would gaze down a highway that would wiggle and squiggle and you would gaze and try to see the end of the highway in the distance. That is how long Quetzalcoatl is. This snake has hair on it 
it usually appears to me as a massive white snake in the sky with colorful splotches on the body. The feeling that this snake carries with it is one of pure disgust. If you're a child of God and Quetzalcoatl appears near you or comes near you, you will literally feel as if you are coated with slime and revulsion. This is the feeling that I always have when I see that snake. And it is a very bold thing. This is just one of Satan's many form, excuse me, please, many forms. This, this snake is extremely bold. It will come right up to your face because that is Satan's nature. Satan will always come right up to your face to test you because Satan is not afraid of anything or anyone. Christians think that Satan fear God, fears God. And yet I've constantly said, think logically. If you lived in heaven and you were put out for an eternity married to forever and told unequivocally that you are not going back and your final end would be to be roasted in the lake of fire, why would you fear anything? All bets are off. Because people do not understand Satan. They constantly think that Satan has limits or Satan is fearful. Satan will do anything. Satan will kill a baby and then eat it. And that is why here on earth, people kill children and eat them, infants. Satan doesn't think about anything because he has nothing to lose. This is why he will be brutal and relentless and extremely bold. This snake that I'm talking about, Quetzalcoatl, whether you are Mexican or Dominican or anything like that, this thing is a bold spirit, a very bold principality, very proud and peacock-like. The Quetzalcoatl snake has colorful feathers that come off it exactly like peacock plumage. And God says that this is the same God, the same spirit, the same false religion that challenged, for instance, the Incans and the Incas and the Mayans and all the people who predate the South Americans that we have today. And so God is telling South America that false religion is going to be the end of you and it's literally going to overwhelm you and destroy you if you don't break its hold from it. And the first one that he is naming by name is not any of the pagan ones where they used to take people up their little steppy pyramids, take them there and kill them and cook them and eat them and, and put the blood out. A very, very bloody form of religion the South Americans stem from. And that form of religion was also practiced here in what America calls its borders. Because all this land, those people used to own it. It's actually theirs. And I've said this before on camera. So, um, that false religion, the one that God is naming here by name, is not even putting to the forefront that blood shedding type of worship. What he's putting here to the forefront is Catholicism. So, I'm not going to go and do a six hour study of Catholicism to come and tell Catholics that they are in a false religion because every time the Lord moves me to speak on it, I speak on it. And then people begin to go into spasms and start calling Madre whoever. And yet you have been deceived. You have been sold a load. No matter how the sins of the Catholic church hit the newspapers, just a moment, please. People will not come out of the false religion. And this is actually the entire function of deception. The entire function of the spirit of deception is to keep deceived people deceived. If deceived people wake up, they will no longer be deceived. They will then have the ability to come to the knowledge of truth, to humble themselves, to say that I believed lies, I inherited lies from my father and my mother, or I went and sought out the lies myself. But now that truth has come, I open my heart to truth because truth is actually Christ Jesus himself. He is truth. And deception doesn't want this because deception is a killing spirit. People think that, oh no, you're just deceived and you sit there, no. You must always take every thought that you have to its logical conclusion. Deception comes to take your life because deception has read the Bible and deception knows that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 to 12 is waiting for someone. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 10 says that because you don't love the truth, you will be given over to the deceivableness of the lying wonders. 
you will get, you will follow the signs and the wonders that Satan antichrist and all the variables of his workers are going to bring. So deception is not just here to deceive you. Deception is actually here as a babysitter. Deception is with you to make you keep following your Illuminati warlock, uh, rap gods because deception knows that it only needs to keep you occupied until such time as Shiloh comes. Once Shiloh appears, you're not going in with him. You will be cast into the outer darkness. And then deception is going to laugh and laugh and laugh because deception always knew that it was going to the lake of fire, but it just didn't want to go alone. Deception is the reason that you keep fighting for your pedophiles. Deception is the reason you don't listen to the children when they say that somebody hurt them. You claim that grandpa couldn't have done it. You swear that the bishop would never do that. He's a man of God, touch not my anointed. Deception is working overtime in all the nations. And the reason that deception is doing such a great job is because of this little square that exists. Deception no longer has to go door to door and say, hi, can I interest you in a small lie? Deception can now flow directly through the screen that is in your hand. And it gathers to itself millions. And it is keeping those millions placated until such time as judgment falls swiftly you die deceived i don't know where you think you're going because you surely know that deception is an unclean spirit and it cannot enter into those gates and streets of gold so imagine where do you think deception is going if you are still partnering with it catholics the lord is telling you here plain in your face that i did not have to go and research he's telling you in your face that your religion is nothing but a plethora of blended ancient religions. So that means bits and bobs that have come down through the kingdoms from the Greeks and the Romans, all their little pagan capering, where they used to go ah, ha, ha, and dance around with leaves and things like that. All of it stirred together in a deadly soup, blended, he says, old pagan and religious rites from ancient Babylon is what modern day people are fighting to believe in. You follow one man, you pray only for an opportunity to receive his sigils and his blessings and for him to stand in that window and wave to you. It doesn't matter what comes out of his mouth that is in the press, that aliens are our brothers and he would baptize them. That the gay people don't need to leave gay because gay is okay and Jesus is love. He exposes himself to you, but you just go, what a man of God. Understand that whenever you call someone a man of God and the nature of that man doesn't match God, you will need to go and repent because you are actually shaming and abusing who and what God is. Whenever you attach of God to a man or a woman who does not match what God has shown of us of himself in the Old Testament and the New Testament, just understand that you have a lot of repenting to do because you are demeaning or attempting to demean and even mock God by matching him to something that he is not and can never be. Your religion is a mix of paganism and old religious rites that have come down from ancient Babylon and God says that he's your God. He's telling you that fatherhood, direct fatherhood, you don't need to pray to any saints. You don't need to do rosaries. You don't need to go and whisper your sins in those little booths to men. The Bible does tell us to confess our sins one to another, but the Bible never told us that a couple Hail Marys would wash the slate clean. The only washer of slates is the blood of Jesus shed upon that mighty cross, such a humble instrument of cruelty. But Jesus humbled himself even to the death of the cross. And now he has risen. He can lead all your captivity captive and set you free. The priest cannot tell you that the Hail Marys and the flagellation from the old days can absolve you. No man has the ability to absolve any other man of sin. It's only that man from Galilee who has the ability to do that. So God is telling you that direct 
father son father daughter relationships are available and you don't need to ask mary anything because mary can't help you because mary is at rest she is waiting just like all the other people to be resurrected to the glory of seeing her son who is also her lord she cannot do a thing for you mary has left the chat and god is telling you to come out of the deception and should you feel the urge to fight that is the presence of idolatry in you that is the presence of something in down deep that is not Jesus and that will not bow its head. The last person to know that they're deceived is a deceived person. Your grandma will know, your boss will know. Everybody will know that your husband is cheating and you'll be like, I just think he comes home late because he drives around to clear his head until 2 a.m. in the morning. The last person to know that deception is at work is the deceived person. Even the blowing of a trumpet in that person's ear avails nothing. It is only the mercy of God that brings deceived people out of deception. But that mercy has to work with something else. If this hand is the mercy of God, the only other thing that breaks the chain of deception is humility. The mercy is extended, but you have to be humble to admit that you've been lied to. You've been sold a load. When mercy partners... With humility and you say, God, you know what? Um, I need to go and take a second, third, and 55th look at things. Immediately, immediately a process will get started. And that is how you will come out of the deception. God says to South Americans to come out of worshiping at the water. This is water rights, which are, which are all over, even here in America. People are releasing albums and they've got themselves submerged in the sea. And you think that Beyonce is the only one who's involved in water deities. Everybody's plunging in the ocean, even in the religious circles. And then they tell you, oh no, it's, it's a sign that I was washed and baptized and born again. How, who did, Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who deceived you? You started so well, but my, 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 the lies. Spirit worship, I guess this is the only one I know is Santeria, but I guess there might be more. Paganism, this is the kind of worship where you return to your roots and you don't want to have anything with following Jesus. And I have just spoken of worshiping Mary as a mother. Mary is Jesus' mom. She's not your mom. She's not a mom to anyone else. The woman has passed on. Kindly allow her to have her gentle rest. Worship my son, Jesus Christ, so that the bloodshed of your ancestors does not return to you anymore. South Americans, I'm telling you, in the name of the Lord, he says that if you don't turn away from Catholicism, Catholicism, which is more conservative and has so many rules and so much falsehood. And at the same time, he says, if you don't turn away from the wild Pentecostal churches, the false churches, who knows that in South America, Jesus comes back every weekend. They have the most amount of Jesus that I've ever seen. South America is currently leading the pack in the returns of Jesus. Like Jesus is alive and well there. He's already come back. All he needs is a white suit and they follow him. And they truly believe that this person who has not come back as the lion of Judah, this person who returned with no sword in his mouth to fight his enemies, he didn't return and the eagles gather. He didn't return and the lightning flashed from the east to the west. He just grew up in a humble village, just like the original Jesus. And then he said that he was Jesus come again. And, and they're attracting millions to themselves. Wild Pentecostalism and false churches. God says, if you don't turn from either the Catholicism and if you don't turn from these lying churches, then you will have wars. And he says that also the same madness that drove your ancestors to bloody extinction will come back to you. And you're going to start to have extremely violent conflict, extremely violent wars and swirling over in the atmosphere, bathing himself in the blood. That fat white snake, Quetzalcoatl, will be above you. And then the Lord spoke another word and he said to South America that you are already judged. You are already judged and you will have wars regardless. Because you regard violence, meaning because you have so much violence, 
And because you tolerate criminals and because of so much bloodshed that you have, you will have skirmishes and conflicts and bloodshed. But I see no great war. This is me speaking as I was observing what the Lord was saying. But I see no great war in South America the way the United States will have one. In America, the war that will come will be called the Great War in capital letters but i do not see any war of that level or of that caliber in south america in south america all i see is what the news will call bloody conflicts regions of fighting that will force people into mass migration people will have to move from one place to another but the entirety of the south american continent will not be engulfed in war like the united states United States, the war that you're going to have is going to be from end to end, from side to side. The whole continent embroiled in a war, a conflagration. This means something that burns like volcano fire or a great fire of trees. America will destabilize everyone on the entire continental plate that she's on. Everyone will be troubled because of her. So this is all the South American nations going through their own conflicts and um, Canada to the north sharing one large plate. God says that America is going to destabilize and basically um, just bother and ruin everybody's life. Everyone will be troubled because of her. Yah says, your neighbors to the north and to the south shall bear pains because of the judgment you will bring upon your entire nation. Thus says the Lord, South America will be troubled, that is, Latin America, and North America will be troubled, that is, the Canadian region all the way up to the ice. So God is saying that America's presence on the North American continent, when her judgments come upon her and she goes into what is known as the Great War, South America, Latin America, is going to feel the repercussions of that. I've already spoken of how many people will flee from here, and the Lord has given the word and said that South America, you are brown now, but you will become white because people will flee out of the United States into the South American nations until the land is white instead of brown. And also North America will be troubled, the Canadian region going all the way up into the snowiest parts. To the nation of America... The Lord says, since you cannot receive the words of his prophecy, which is his own testimony, therefore the judgments will fall upon you like blows from an angry man. You shall be scattered to the four corners of the earth and displaced out of your homeland. You will not call America home anymore and none shall remain in the homeland that you stole from the original owners. Because you have mocked my words, and because you have mocked my messengers, calling them false and causing them misery, which pierces me as much as it pierces them, I shall do to you what I did in the Old Testament. Since you say that the Old Testament is not relevant, I will judge you out of the new one, which you still do not study or fully understand. Babylon, you that kills the prophets, Babylon by name, the days of your reckoning are near, and not one jot or tittle written against you shall fail or fall to the ground. And so, this section of the prophecy is directly towards America, and God is saying not only will you have a great war, and not only will you be judged for being the one who went and created in Israel that nobody told you to create, but God is also saying that you are the harlot of the revelation of whom it is written, you that kills the prophets. So people will always argue and say, we haven't killed any prophets and everything, but God has a different estimation. The Lord has said that, first of all, the babies that you have put to death included messengers. You never gave them a chance to draw their first breath. You cut them up and flushed them into various systems of baby selling and parts selling and stem cells and blood facials and all the other things. That is the first level. And then with your mouth, 
You pick up stones and you stone the messengers of God. You curse them and you say that they're false. You even do dangerous things like saying that the prophecies are coming by witchcraft and divination and you do not understand for the Lord does say in your ears that you don't even read the Old Testament or the new one. You don't study the New Testament and he said that you don't fully understand it. Because if you actually studied the Bible, you would understand that it's a terrible thing to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. The spirit of prophecy is nothing more than Jesus himself speaking by his spirit. He says, since you cannot receive the words of his prophecy, which is his own testimony. So the testimony of the Lord is coming to you free of charge. The channel has no ads. The videos are long enough and carefully gone through so that you can lack nothing in your understanding. But then you say that an unclean spirit is speaking the words. You say that it is Baal and witchcraft and other things. And you do not understand that you are committing the sin that the, the Lord says he will not pardon. That is the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give his witness of a prophecy. And then you will say a demon speaks. To blaspheme the Holy Spirit is to attribute the words and the workings of the, the Lord's spirit to an unclean spirit. So the Holy Spirit will write a missive. He will pen a letter like Paul to the churches. Imagine if the Corinthians had said, we perceive demons have sent this letter to us to tell us to stop sleeping with our mothers and to stop being fornicators of every type. That is how you blaspheme the spirit of the Lord. That is an unpardonable sin. God says, since you can't receive prophecy, his own testimony, don't be surprised when the judgments that fall upon the country feel like a very angry man is hitting you. And God says that Americans will be scattered to the four corners of the earth. And this is a prophecy since 2020. I've been bringing this word, diaspora. Diaspora is actually the nicer part. Diaspora means that you have decided to make a, a pilgrimage to another place and you go. So people are living in the UK, people are living here and there, and then that's diaspora. When, when the Lord uses the other phrase that he has used, scattering, scattering is now uh, hard impacts have come and you basically just take your skin and flee. Because if you don't flee at the moment of the impact, then you will lose your life so there's diaspora, I'm going back to my home country, I think we're moving back with the kids, and then they're scattering, one by choice, one by force. You will be scattered to the four corners of the earth, and you will be displaced out of your homeland. You will not call America home anymore, and no one is going to stay in this land that you stole from the original owners, because you've been mocking my words, and you've also been mocking my messengers, and saying that they're false. And you cause them misery. And the misery that you cause them pierces me. This is God speaking. As much as it pierces them. Therefore, I will handle you how I did in the Old Testament. And we know what God used to do with nations in the Old Testament. Even if you're not a Bible reader, uh, God's fame is legendary as to how he handled rebellious peoples and rebellious nations in the Old Testament. But then he says that he will bring your judgment out of the New Testament since you say that the Old Testament is not relevant. And this phrase is simply referring to how American pastors constantly tell people here that, oh no, it's not for today. That's the phrase that's used in the churches. Oh, don't worry about that stuff in the Old Testament. It's not for today. So you see the book, the book is single. The book is whole. The book has a front half and a back half. But then you, Pastor Bob and Deaconess Franks and whoever else have just elevated yourself and said that, oh no, we're splicing the book in half. First half, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. God knows your heart. It's the second half. And so he says that your judgment will come out of the second half because you are the nation, Babylon by name, that kills prophets. And therefore the days for God to settle all accounts with you are near. And he says that not one jot or tittle shall pass away or fail or fall to the ground concerning your judgment. Now I'm going to read, um, from the New Testament, the passage that the Lord gave me, you can, if you have your Bible with you, you can just come with me to um, Matthew 21. Matthew 21, and I'm going to start from verse 33. 
Hear another parable. This is Jesus speaking. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower, and he leased it to vine dressers, and he went into a far country. Now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruits. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. And so they took him and they cast him out of the vineyard, and they killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? They said to him, this is the people who were listening to the parable answering Jesus. So they said to him, he will destroy those wicked men miserably, and he will lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. And so Jesus is giving a crowd that he's teaching here, understanding about things that they're inquiring about. And he uses this parable and he tells them, well, there was a guy who owned a very fruitful plot of land, you know, good land. And it tells us here that the man didn't just leave the land fallow. This man was obviously an industrial man. So uh, the landowner planted a vineyard there and then he, he hedged it with a hedge. Now you plant a vineyard and you don't put any protection in it. Nobody's gonna have any interest in your, your vines, you know, at the earlier part of the, of your planting but when your grapes are ripe and they're looking all deliciously green or red or dark purple this is when people passing by will casually pick a bunch and walk off so this is a picture of a man who understands that it is possible to have your labor robbed by people who have not done the work and to prevent it he put a hedge around it so he set guard rails in place he hedged his labor about to protect it it even says that he dug a wine press in it and he also built a tower now in the old days you would have a watchman up there because obviously even if you have a hedge some thieves are very hard working they will come and they will steal no matter what you do to protect what you have i know that personally after all these years of free internet where people can just steal the messages and go and prophesy it on their channels, blend all these messages that have cost my soul something. They just blend it into the rest of their lives. And, and God is, I, I saw that God told me, you saw nothing. You steal the messages verbatim. But the vine dresser, the vine owner here, he hedged his hedge. And then he also built a tower and he had a guy up there. And what the guy in the tower does is at nights when thieves multiply, the tower guy would be watching to cry out in case he saw anyone. And then obviously the landowner's workers are supposed to come and seize the thief, seize him, beat him and do whatever else that they do. So he even had a wine press. The wine press is where after you've done your labor, you obviously go and press out the vintage and then you store and bottle it and then you wait for your reward. But this man was traveling and so he gave his labor to people to rent from him and they're called vine dressers now the vine dressers will look after the vines as if it's theirs and they will look after the wine press and everything else that's what they're supposed to do and they're supposed to be running it just like someone running a rental property but when the landowner then wants a portion of what is grown why because he has every right to it's his land it's his tower it's his hedge it's his wine press he built it all he's always supposed to be able to draw and reap from the labor so the time came when he knew the grapes are ready now and they've probably pressed them and perhaps I want a few fresh grapes for my table, for the table of my household. I also want a few bottles of the wine. And he sent his servants to go and require and request what was naturally his. But what did the vine dressers who were only renting out this place do? It says that they beat up on the servants twice and they even killed some of them and they stoned the rest. Now, America, God is bringing this grievance against you, and he is telling you that you are the ones who beat up prophets, and you stone them, and you kill them. And you might protest and say, well, Celestial, we, we might have beaten a few, 
with our activities and we we certainly have stoned uh, quite a number of them with our mouths but we protest dear lady and we haven't killed anyone and yet this is the nation whereby I have brought the prophecies and I have said that as we go into the beast system the primary people that they will be hunting for is people like me people that they know can see without seeing I don't need to go to Russia to know that they will be here. I've never been to China, but I've told you that they will be here. I've never been to the White House, but I've told you what they're doing underground and inside it. People who can see, the devil fears an eye. The devil doesn't fear the people that you love. You go to their channels and all they're doing is looking at somebody else being a sinner and reacting to it for an hour and then you're like, what a good word, what a great live stream. You're jumping onto live streams that tell you nothing. There's no edification. You and the reactor are reacting to the sin that any of us can see on the New York City train. I have watched men licking each other in this city. And I felt so sorry for the old people in the train with me. They were doing everything but the actual sex. And I did not take out my cell phone and begin to react to it with my subscribers. This is what you are calling edification and pre preparation of the saints. When you hear me telling you that the beast system is coming to hunt down everyone who names the name of Jesus so that if possible, they can take all our lives from us. You're on live streams. What a good word, brother. I feel so blessed, sister. The final part of this prophecy will fulfill. You have beaten the prophets and you have stoned them and caused them a piercing misery that God says pierces him also and therefore he will not deal with you as he used to in the old testament your new testament that you feel is for today is where your punishment will come from what will the owner of the vineyard do when he comes what will he do to the vine dressers it says that he will destroy them for they are wicked men and now you understand why Revelation chapter 18 has absolutely no mercy in it whatsoever. And now you understand why the love and the compassion and the comfort that you constantly are attacking me for is not present. The vineyard owner knows exactly who he left the nation of America with. He knew that they were wicked men that love evil and call it good and hate good and call it evil and therefore he will come and with his judgments that he will rain down upon this continent like an angry man he will destroy Matthew 21 verses 33 to 41 the last part of the prophecy is also to the nation of America and it is speaking about God's people hear the words of the Lord you have seized my people and you have torn them. This is the work of slavery. You have put my people to death. You killed them in the cotton fields and you destroyed them with lust in your bedrooms at night. You made a 12 year old into a mother and then you took her child to sell when he was old enough. You made blood to run in my nation now blood will run as a recompense for the things that have been done in my sight. For I am the Lord and I forget nothing. I by no means pardon the guilty, but I pursue the wicked down to the third and the fourth generation. I will repay the wound of my people and the prophecy of my utterance shall be fulfilled. This is the word of the Lord. I'm reading to you out of the Old Testament. I'm in Deuteronomy chapter 5, and I will just read verses 9 and 10. That's the verse the Lord gave. And Moses is addressing all of Israel on the Lord's behalf, Yah's behalf. And Moses is giving them um, laws and rules of what God wants them to know. He's refreshing them, their memory from the Exodus. So all the laws and rules, honor your mother and your father and things like that, honor the Sabbath. 
he has given them in Exodus chapter 20. But now it's come to the point that Moses can no longer go any further with them. They're about to cross over into Canaan. And as is the habit of leaders in Israel, especially religious leaders, because they don't have this stuff written down for each person to have a copy, the way we are so blessed to have a Bible now, you refresh the hearing of God's requirements, God's laws, God's regulations, God's rules, even God's promises and God's love. You refresh these things periodically in the hearing of the people. And so Moses is telling them how God has brought them out of Egypt and he's the one who rescued them from Pharaoh's house of bondage. And he says, let's just go from verse seven. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. So God is saying here, contrary to what people say, Celestial, why is God bringing up these old things? We didn't do it. The Lord says that he will visit iniquity down the generations to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate him. Now, people will always say, well, we don't hate God. If you hate any righteous thing that the Lord has commanded us to do, which does not include shackling your brothers and sisters and carting them off to go and work in cotton until they fell from heat, exhaustion, not enough food, and then beating them to the point of expiry, then you hate God. The apostle said it. I think it was Apostle John where he said, how can you claim to love God and you hate your brother? That's in the New Testament. That's just basic Bible truth. So when God brings these words, when God brings these grave musings that are upon his heart, people don't want to repent. They don't want to humble themselves. They want to become history experts. And you know, I always say, be any expert you want. I will simply be an expert in reading from the tablet. You seized the Lord's people and you tore them. You tore them from where they were, and he says that this is the work that slavery did. People were seized, and in the process, people were killed. They were torn. They were thrown overboard. They were shackled. They died in their own vomit. They died in their own waste. They died, and their family never saw them again. You put my people to death. This is in the passage. This is wherever these people were carried. They were not only carried to one spot. They were carried to multiple places in Europe and even far afield in Asia. You killed them in the cotton fields and you destroyed them with lust in your bedrooms at night. So you, you take a man's wife, she's pretty, or you take a man's wife just because he loves her and you want to see that look on his face, the look of brokenness, the look of knowing that if he tries to defend her as any man would, he will go to the place that you have round the back where all the other men who didn't get it right are buried. You made a 12 year old a mother and you took her child to sell when he was old enough. So everyone is outraged for today's pedophilia, but the pedophilia of yesteryear, oh well, we should move on from those things. And then you took the baby who was your own son and you sold him because he came from a mother who was just property. God said that you caused blood to flow in his nation. So America belongs to God after all. It's passed through the hands of many owners, but the person who is the original vineyard owner, Matthew 21, we just looked at it. The person who has only leased the continent of the Americas to vine dressers, vine dressers who have had ownership and then been exterminated and lost ownership. And now a new bunch of vine dressers are in possession. And guess what? Here you have heard 
that another group of vine dressers are come. Behold, a people terrible from the north, Russia, China, the kings of the east, coming to take their prize. And the title deed will be passed on to new vine dressers. Blood has run in the nation that belongs to God. The nations belong to God. Peoples, the nations belong to God. Countries, the nations belong to God. Landmass, it is all his. Mankind, you own nothing. But what happened is this great man went on a journey and because he took too long to come back, you became like the evil, wicked men. This is to all nations, hear me as I speak. Because the original owner of this earth, the soil, every plant, every tree, every breath that he's still allowing you to take, because he took his journey to a far country and he has taken a long time to come back, mankind has risen up in their heart and they actually think that this earth belongs to them. And that's why the Nephilim are coming to pluck it right out of our hands. When you are on this earth cooking oatmeal for a giant, you will remember that there were greater things here before you and even they will come back as evil vine dressers to take this territory from us and the title deed will finally go back into king jesus's hands when he comes to put a stop to all that and by that time we would have learned lessons that we wish we had never forgotten from the days of noah Blood will therefore flow in America as a recompense. A recompense is a perfectly balanced payment. So when someone gives you a recompense, they're not giving you a penny more than you earned. You earn $12 in crimes, you're going to get a $12 repayment. Not, not $11.55 and not $12.97. You're going to get back a $12 payment for your $12 crime. Blood will flow as a recompense for the things that have been done in my sight, for I am the Lord and I forget nothing. So let us understand these are not the memories of Celestial just because she is brown. These are the memories of someone who watched it all. He heard his people drinking water when they were thrown chained up into the sea. And he heard the 12 year old crying in labor pains, giving birth to a baby she should not have been having at that age. He was the witness. I am only the messenger now. I by no means pardon the guilty, but I pursue the wicked down to the third and the fourth generation. And God says that now he has come to repay that wound for the wound that was laid upon his people is the same wound that is upon him. And the prophecy of his utterance will be fulfilled. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to leave this prophecy as a standalone prophecy. The word you have heard is the Psalm 83 war and Exodus, January the 7th, 2024. The Lord has given me notes on that and it will be a separate video, hopefully made tonight, but if not, it will be coming soon. And then after that, the prophecies for Gog and Magog. There's only two of them. You can go to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. This is www.the-masters-voice.com. And if you go simply to, you can just click on any prophecy really. And then when you go to the bottom part, it's navy blue. So the top part is always white where the writing is. And then the bottom is a navy blue field. And there, there's a search box. If you just type in Gog and Magog, um, you will find you will find that. And you can also go and look at the prophecy series that is called the Slavery Chronicles. There are five um, prophecies in that that will cast more light and give more understanding to the fact that God says that the same slavery that America did will come upon her. You can ask, well, why isn't Spain going to be enslaved? Because God says America is going to be enslaved. You may ask why not the Arabs. You may ask, well, what about the UK? They started it. They indeed did. And God knows where they are. He knows them. In fact, one of the things that God has said that is in one of these small prophecies that is made up of snippets is that all you nations that took slaves, all you nations that participated in this great evil, and then you have 
greatly glossed over it. You've changed the narrative and written on it. God says that uh, you will be made ashamed and you will have to pay back to the people that you robbed. You will have to pay them back and you will make public apologies. I think that is in one of the slavery chronicles where I said that America is definitely going to, what God showed me is that America is definitely going to make public apologies to the Native Americans and the Native Americans are going to have a very split reaction to that. Uh, as I saw them in the vision, some of them were incredibly bitter and they could care less um, because America attempted to make a show of it and it was a ceremony and apologies to the living descendants of the chiefs and all that. And some people, you know, their forgiveness was complete, I guess, and they could be more easily placated and they received the gifts and everything like that. But some people were boiling with bitterness. They did not attend and they didn't want to hear a single word of sorry. So you can look at the slavery, the slavery chronicles, it is five parts. And I'm celestial and this is the master's voice. There are no reaction videos here. I'm a busy person. And a lot of that busyness is because the Lord has a certain urgency. If you have not picked up by now that there is an urgency in the father and the earth is actually catching Jesus's fever. If you did not know that that person is highly anxious to come back and to take ownership of all that is his. And if you did not read Matthew 24, along with Revelation 6, and understand that there are parts of this particular compos composition that we will not skip, there will be no shortcuts and we are not going to skip anything. So as you hear the word of the Lord, the Bible is your friend. The Bible is your friend. Buy a Bible that you can understand. One that as you're browsing in the store, you're looking at the words, you're understanding everything that is in there. Just don't buy a message Bible or a passion Bible because those two the Lord did rouse me as far back as 2018 to strongly tell the people of God to stay away from those Bibles. There's books of buffoonery written for buffoons. Just get yourself a Bible that you can understand. The KJV is too hard for you, downscale to the NKJV. That's too tough, get yourself an NIV. Forget about the Bible experts, the people who have been writing the, reading the Bible for 40 years, and you just got here last Tuesday, and then they will tell you to get a KJV so that you can stumble in the weeds of they, thou, them. Because they've had 40 years, and just like the vine dressers, they've forgotten that babies don't start with meat. Babies start with milk. I'm Celestial and this is the master's voice. I'm on SoundCloud and Spotify. I am on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. I am on Telegram. I am on Instagram. I am on Facebook. I am on TikTok. I'm here on YouTube. And I'm also here on YouTube as Canal Profetico La Voz del Señor. I'm on BitChute, Rumble, and Brighteon. I will do my best to make sure that I put all the information for this ministry in the description box. Sometimes it just takes a little time, but I'll do my best to make sure that I do that and that I leave some links for you on today's video. And God bless you. And until I see you again, goodbye.